we're going to have an amazing time and we're about to do a Bible verse and we're going to learn it and it's going to be really fun and we're all going to be like, woohoo, woohoo. That's what we're going to be like and that's what I want to see you doing. If you don't have that kind of energy, then ramp it up because that's what we want today, okay? I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 14 verse 6. So the verse tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Lots of people around you, maybe it's friends, family, or even maybe people at school might be telling you what they think the way to look, the way to act, the way to think is. They might also be telling you the truths they think you should and shouldn't believe. And they might even tell you the life they think that you should have. But Jesus is saying here that he is the way, the truth and the life. He is the way to be. He is the way to think. He is the way to act. He is the truth to believe and he is the life we have. The only way to have a true relationship with God is through Jesus. Okay, let's go through it just one more time just to make sure we're definitely completely perfect at this wonderful Bible verse. Okay, you ready? Take it away. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John chapter 40 verse 6. Hey Penny. Hello Peter. Hey boys and girls. I'm really struggling with prayer. What about it? Well, I don't really know what I need to say. Well, I know this method that can really help us to pray. It's called the stop method. No, Penny, I don't I don't literally mean stop. That's just what it's called. The first letter in the word stop is S, and that stands for sorry. Sorry? What do I need to be sorry for? Well, we need to be sorry for all the bad things we do. These things are called sin, and God and sin don't really mix well. 
Penny, do you think you could tell me a couple of bad things, maybe? Um, well, I ate lots of sweets yesterday. That's quite bad. Well, although that might be unhealthy and, and bad for your teeth, it's probably not sinful. Um, well, I did steal the sweets off my little brother. Oh, Penny, stealing is a sin. Did you say sorry to your brother? Um, yeah, only once Mum had told me to. Well, you know, it's especially good to say sorry to God when we do bad things. What about sinful things or bad things that you've said? Well, I told Mum to go away when she was telling me off. Penny, that's very naughty. And that would have upset God too. Oh, I didn't think that was even that bad because in my head, I really wanted to scream at her and shut the door in her face. But Penny, even those thoughts are sinful too. The Bible says that we've all sinned. We've done bad things, we've said bad things, and we've even thought bad things. God's standard is perfect, and we can never reach that. Oh, that makes me sad. So I can never be God's friend? Not unless we say sorry to God. But once we say sorry, we can be forgiven, and we can be God's friends. Oh, that makes me feel so much better. I'm sad that I've hurt God, but I'm happy that there's a way that I can be his friend again. Yeah. Why don't you have a go at saying sorry to God now by praying? Okay, let's say a prayer. Boys and girls, you can join in too. Dear God, we're really sorry for the times when we've upset you. We realise how serious our sin is to you and how it stops us from being your friend. We're sorry for the times today when we've done bad things, thought bad thoughts, and most importantly, disobeyed your word, the Bible. Please forgive us for these sins and help us to live lives that please you. Amen. Amen. Hello. Today we're going to be playing Hungry Hippos. No, we're not going to be playing the board game version. We're going to be playing a version where we use humans and lots more things. To be able to play, you're going to need a bucket or a cone to catch the fish with. You're also going to need some toys or little balls to be able to act as the fish. And you're also going to need a chair like this or a skateboard to lie on to move to get the fish. Importantly, you're also going to need someone much bigger than you to be able to push you around to be able to catch these fish, as you can see in this clip that's going on in the background. But whenever you're playing, don't do what Joe does here. Don't try and throw the balls back towards your team. So now that we've seen that, shall we watch a proper game go on? Let's go. So congratulations to Joe and Axel who clearly won this game and the way to win is obviously to get the most fish which they did. Also whenever you play make sure that you give those who are pushing you an opportunity to have a go as well. I'm sure they'd love to try this at some point. That's us for Hungry Hippos and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Take care. I'm Simon Peter and I'm a follower of Jesus. Now I'm a fisherman along with my brother Andrew and my dad and my cousins John and James. Fishing is a way of life for us. It's all I've ever known. But I don't fish for fish anymore. No, ever since I met Jesus I've been tasked with something far more valuable. Now I fish for people. I'll explain more in a minute, but my story with Jesus started when I had been out fishing all night, but hadn't caught any fish. We had spent hours and hours 
trying all the usual spots, but we just had nothing. And when I got to shore, I was so miserable. And I started going through the usual routines of mending the nets and cleaning the boats when Jesus came along. I knew Jesus. I had met him a couple of times. And I liked him. I thought he would make a great friend. And I thought he could be one of us lads. But that day, I realised that he's way more than one of the lads. He is God himself walking and living among us. Jesus asked me if he could teach the people from my boat as people were coming from all over the place to hear Jesus speak about God's kingdom, heaven. So I rowed out slightly and Jesus taught the people from the boat as they stood on the shore. And after Jesus had finished, he, he told me to throw my net into, this, into the deep water and I tried to explain to Jesus that we hadn't caught anything. But my inner voice told me to just trust him. So I threw the net over the side of the boat and caught the most enormous catch of fish. I seriously thought the net was going to break. So I called over my cousins and together we pulled it onto the boat. Oh, I thought we were going to sink. There were just so many fish. And that's when I realised, this man Jesus isn't a normal man like me. He's so much greater. He's holy and perfect. He deserves all praise and honour. And I'm just a sinner who's made a mess of my life and failed God so, so many times. I fell on my knees. I knew I'd done wrong and I knew that I wasn't worthy to be a friend of Jesus. But he didn't send me away. He didn't reject me, but he accepted my sorry for the wrong I've done. And he forgave me and he invited me to follow him. Now my job now isn't to fish for fish anymore, but it's to fish for people. And my job as a follower of Christ is to tell everyone about him and why Jesus is good news. Now I need to go and fix this net. See you soon. Bye. Hi there. Well, in this true story from the Bible, we see Jesus at the beginning of his ministry where he's starting to do some incredible things. We call them miracles, where Jesus healed and helped lots and lots of people with all kinds of problems that they had. But we mustn't lose sight of the fact that Jesus' main purpose and main ministry was to teach and preach, to tell people about God and God's kingdom and to tell people they too could know a place in God's kingdom forever. They could know their sins forgiven. They could know peace and friendship with God that would last for all eternity. And that message that Jesus taught and preached about 2,000 years ago is the same good news that, that you need to hear, that I need to hear, that Jesus has come to save and rescue us. And this is what we see with Simon Peter. He realised he was a sinner. He realised he'd done things wrong. And even in his religious life and being brought up in a, in a good home, he knew he was far from being friends with God. And so when Jesus came to meet him and did this amazing miracle with a big catch of fish, what do we see Peter doing? He falls down at Jesus' feet. He falls down and he says to Jesus, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Did you see that in verse 8? I am a sinful man. I'm, I'm not worthy. I am not worthy of being your friend, Jesus. I can't be one of your followers. I can't spend time with you. But G Peter had to learn that he was exactly the kind of person Jesus came for. You see, Jesus, he didn't come just for religious people, for good people, intelligent people, nice people, good-looking people. Jesus came for those who humbly would say, I've messed up. And I don't deserve God's friendship. But with you, Jesus, I can be friends with God because you, Jesus, are the one who can forgive me and save me and make me friends with God. That's what Jesus came for. People like you and me who would, like Peter, say, I'm a sinner, but I know that you, Jesus, 
are the one who can help. And this true story in the Bible reminds us of three things that are true for all people who would call themselves Christians. Number one, it reminds us that all Christians are, are followers. Now all people are followers. We all follow something. It might be a football team. It might be a sports club of some other type. It might be a, a singer or a group or a band. It might be fashion. It might be the latest trends. We all follow somebody or something. We've all got our heroes. But a Christian follows Jesus. Jesus is number one in their life. And number two, all Christians forsake things to follow Jesus. That's not to say that they live lives that are boring and having to give everything up to follow him. It means thinking, what stops me from putting Jesus first in my life? What stops me from pleasing Jesus? What things do I watch, listen to, spend my time doing that stop me from giving my very best to Jesus? As a Christian, I want to forsake them, turn away from them, realise they're of little importance when it comes to putting Jesus first in my life. And for Peter, he realised, well, his fishing career for a time was to be put on hold. That the most important thing for him now was knowing Jesus, learning from Jesus, spending time with Jesus. And so he puts his career as a great fisherman on hold to instead be a follower of Jesus. And we are called to put Jesus first and Turn away from those things that are less important, that Jesus might be number one in our life. And the third thing for a Christian is that they're all fishers, fishers of people. You see that strange phrase with Peter? He was told by Jesus, no longer are you a fisher, catching fish in the sea, you're going to fish for people, a fisher of men, he was described. In other words, Jesus was saying, a follower of mine will want to tell other people the good news. Jesus wants his, his net to be full. He wants people from all over the world to know of his good news. And he wants to do that through people like you and me, if we're followers of his. He wants us to tell people one by one and invite them to follow him. And so I invite you now, you could be a follower of Jesus. You could join in his great net, his kingdom, heaven, you could be a friend of his forever and be one of his fish like I am. And so let me ask you, are you living for Jesus? Are you a Christian today? Would you call yourselves a follower of him? If not, would you like to? Today would be a great day to start following Jesus. I became a Christian when I was 10 years old when some good Christian people told me of Jesus' love for me and invited me to say a prayer, thanking Jesus for dying on the cross for me and being my rescuer, saying sorry for the wrong things I'd done and saying, please, please, Jesus, be my king. Save and rescue me. Give me this eternal life in heaven that you talk about. So I'm going to say a prayer and invite you to say that prayer with me. And in doing so, I want to think, what am I willing to forsake for Jesus? What will I give up? Because I truly want Jesus to be number one in my life. And say amen at the end of this prayer and tell somebody, why not tell an older Christian that you want to be a follower of Jesus too and you want them to help you know how to follow Jesus and to make him number one in your life now, right through your life, right into heaven in the future to come. So let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving me and dying on the cross for me. I'm sorry for the wrong things I've done that don't please you and which hurt other people. Thank you for forgiving me and giving me eternal life in heaven. Please help me to live as a Christian, to please you and to make your good news known to other people. Amen. Hello, my name is Rohan and welcome to the next Yorkshire Counts quiz. The way this quiz will work is I'll ask you a question uh, based on the passage that Andy's just explained and if you get the answer right then you get to have a go at this challenge. This challenge um, is about being like a fisherman. Uh, there are many fishermen in this story so your job is to find Faisal the fish. I've named him Faisal after my friend Faisal um, and so if you get the question right 
then I'll move these cups around. And if you guess which cup Faisal is incorrectly, then you get a point. So why not grab someone from your household to see who knows their stuff better? Great. Question one. Jesus is looking for people in this story. Simon Peter is one of those people. What does Simon Peter do to show that he is the sort of person Jesus is looking for? Just pause me if you need to think of the answer. So, what Simon Peter does to show that he is one of the people that Jesus is looking for, is that he says to him, look Jesus, I know I've done wrong, and he falls at his knees. He recognises how great Jesus is, and he recognises how rubbish he is. So, Faisal is in this middle one. Let me move it about. Great. Which cup is Faisal in? Left, middle or right? Very well done if you guessed right. Faisal is there. So, remember that for the next one. Question number two. Jesus is, is looking for people to follow him. Nowadays, we call them Christians. What are the three things that Andy said, uh, explain what a Christian does? What three things does a Christian do? If you get any two of these, you're going to have a go at this challenge. A Christian, number one, follows Jesus. A Christian, number two, forsakes all other things, which means say no to all other things that are unhelpful for them following Jesus. And question number three is, they then go and tell all other people about Jesus. Well then, if you've got any two of those three, files in this one. Great. Which one is he in? Left, middle or right? Where's Faisal? Are you a good fisherman? Well done if you guessed left. Next one. Jesus says to Peter that he will now be a fisher of men. What does this mean? Again, pause me if you need to think of the answer. A fisher of men is someone who tells everyone else about who Jesus is. That no longer bringing fishes in fish into the net, they are bringing people in to hear about, about who Jesus is and to follow him. Great, Faisal's in this one. Oh, I put him back in, just fallen out. Uh, right, if you got that question right, can you guess where he is? Very well done. Oh, Faisal's got a walkabout, or swimabout actually, he's a fish. Um, he was in the middle one. Very well done if you guessed that. Okay, final question now. This is where you really separate the, 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 those who know their stuff and those who are only pretending to. Hannah lovely took us through our, uh, our memory verse. Maybe with someone else in your house, can you just tell them what the memory verse is and where it's from? That would be really great. Let's give you a moment to pause me and to tell them. The memory verse is from John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Very well done if you got that. So file's in the middle. Let's look at where he is now. So. You followed him? Right. Is he in the right one? No. This one? No. This one? No. Faisal's gone. I guess that must mean the quiz is over. So very well done. Uh, if you got any of those questions right, and we look forward to seeing you next time on our Yorkshire Camps quiz. Well, it's been short and sweet, but I've loved seeing you all again with my imagination, and I hope you have a fantastic summer. Bye! See you soon! Bye.